right, everybody. For those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest, and it's go time. Now, uh, if I could draw your attention to your uh, menu wheel in the lower left, you're going to notice the microphone icon at the top of that menu wheel. At the top of the when that microphone is clear, we can hear everything happening in your environment. So I've gone ahead and I've turned that to red. Uh, and this means that you're muted. So that basically if somebody comes into your environment, says, hey, are you still on that thing? Right? Feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear any of that. And this way you'll avoid social ruin back at the campfire. If you have like a dog that starts barking, you won't become known as the avatar that started barking during go time. You know, it just ruined your, your growing reputation in all space, you know, and uh, that works. So I'm also going to ask if you can all stay off of the stage area here. This way nobody blocks this display and uh, gives me a little bit of room to move around through the whole presentation thing. Right now, go uh, now. Go time is an event for Oculus Go users, uh, but all are welcome. So, if you're on other device, feel free to hang around. You know, maybe you pick up some useful tips that helps our Go community in all space because there are a tremendous amount of Go users in all space. And uh, you know, hopefully, we're going to give them some useful information today. Um, now, when uh, let's see. Now, uh, when you are on a Go, right? There are some challenges. Speaking of challenges, right? I've been in bed for about the past year and a half or so due to a medical condition. So when my Go came, I was super excited. Remember that feeling when you first put it on, that feeling of being transported to another world, right? Nothing like it. And I put it on and I've been reading about Altspace for a while. So this was like my first stop, came into Altspace right away. And the first thing I did when I came out of the load screen was I looked up and I saw the sky up there. And it looked a lot like what I remember the sky looking like, right? And I was super grateful for the experience. I was so grateful, I started volunteering right away, like that day. And uh, when I started volunteering, I learned some stuff. I learned that, like, uh, you know, for example, I wasn't lasting the entire event because my battery would die, right, before the event was over. And I'd have to recharge. I'd come back into all space. I'd try to track down the host if I could. And I, you know, apologize for flaking out. And uh, so I got off to kind of a rough start. So I started asking a lot of questions to people, like, you know, how can I make this better? How can I make my battery last longer? You know, how can I solve some of these issues? And uh, I started hearing some things. I started hearing, like, for example, that I wouldn't be able to just laser pointer here, right? I wouldn't be able to use this, they said, on an Oculus Go. And you know what? That turned out to not be true, right? Also, I was told that, you know, I wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, to work these slides here. Right? And that turned out not true, right? And I was also told that despite having a background in presenting material just like this, that I wouldn't be able to do that because my device wasn't reliable enough. And that also turned out to not be true. Uh, and that told me that there's a strong disconnect between the perception of mobile users uh, on an Oculus Go versus the reality of what it's actually like to be on a Go, right? Uh, that being said, you know, it's not to say there aren't problems. There are, but most of these problems are solvable, right? And at the very least, the ones that aren't solvable are manageable, right? And we're going to show you how to do some of that today. Uh, and there's two methods that we can take to do that. We can work with the device we already have on our heads, right? Try some of that stuff today. Or you can upgrade your experience to exceed the limitations of your device. And those of you that have been here before know I can't stand this term, right? It's like if somebody tells you every day they hate your shirt, you're going to start thinking, you know, it's not the shirt they don't like, right? That's they start feeling like that after a while. I've been hearing some new ones too. I've been hearing weaker device. Uh, you know, I don't like any of these terms. Right? Because it's real easy to think, like, you have to remember something. There's another term that gets thrown around in all space it's an awful lot, and that's community. And you, the individual, make up the community, not the kind of device you're using. That's just the vehicle that brings you into all space. It's the you part of the equation that's the important part, right? You're not your device any more than you're your house or your car, and I find it pays to remember that when you're in all space and you hear in terms like that being thrown around. All right? Now, let's start with the device you already have on your head. What are some things you can do to improve your experience right now? Uh, well, it's important to remember that our devices, they lose power even when they're not in use. So if you put your device on at the table, you know, the night before, you know, and then like, you know, you go to sleep and you had 100% when you went to sleep, when you woke up, that percentage is going to be less. It's going to drop down. And, you know, you'll notice like if you have, uh, you know, 20% power, right, on your battery, your screen's going to flicker and stuff like that. So your job is to keep that power level as close to 100% as possible when you come into all space. And it requires some advanced planning. Like if you go to altvr.com and you say, you know, how am I going to spend my night tonight, right? What am I going to do, right? Well, you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to see the, the event coming up called, you know, called Go Time. And you've heard great things about the host. You heard he's very dynamic. You heard he's got this amazing hair. He's got this shirt that you're starting to see everywhere, right? And, you know, uh, you want to go to that. So what you want to do is you want to charge the device, you want to plug it in about an hour before the event starts, right? This way, you're going to come in with 100% battery power and you're going to ensure that you're going to have the best performance your device can give you. Uh, and when you first put the device on your head, you're going to notice there's that middle button that you press to turn that on there. If you press and hold this, but don't do this now. If you disappear, I'm going to feel it, right? But if you press and hold that middle power button right there, and you press and hold on to that for about three to four seconds, you're going to see three buttons appear in the air in front of you. 
And that middle button is a restart button. So every time you put your device on your head and you come into all space, do that. Press and hold it down. You see the three buttons. It says restart. You press restart, right? And this is going to get rid of all the temporary files that are, you know, in use. It's going to way to clear your memory. I think of it as clearing your mind. Because you know, your headset's up to all the stuff. It's, it's, it's checking for updates to the apps. It's checking for updates to firmware. Maybe it has a pen pal on the other side of the world. You know, maybe your headset has a whole secret life you don't know anything about, right? But if you clear your mind out like this by pressing that button and holding it there, pressing that restart, you're going to start it and you got 100% power, and then you come into all space. And when you get here, you know, you may have noticed what an important role body length plays in all space, right? Like you'll notice that, you know, for example, uh, you know, if you're in an event like this and the moderator comes up to you, right? And he's shaking their head like this. You know, that means don't do that thing, right? Or for example, maybe, you know, I'm up here on the stage, right? And I'm going waving my hand like this, right? And that's saying, you know, get off my stage, right? But there are going to be times in all space where you find that your real world hand isn't where your avatar's hand is. Your real world hand might be here, but your avatar's hand might be up here. So when I go to wave somebody up the stage, going, get off my stage. What's going to happen is everyone else is going to see me going like this. Right? And, and it looks like I'm saying, hey, everybody, welcome to go time. I'm super friendly. And I'm not really saying that at all. I'm saying get off the stage, do it now. Right? And what's going to happen now is like, you know, when these two things don't connect, your body language is less convincing and it actually makes it more difficult to connect with people. So what you can do is, uh, you know, if on your controller, on the very bottom of it, there's a button, right? You have a trackpad, you've got a button below that and a button below that. And don't do this now, because if you do it, right, I'm going to feel it if you disappear. But if you press that button, you get taken out to the Oculus main menu and you'll have a choice when you're there to quit or resume. If you press resume, you can get brought right back into all space and it's great if you press that button by accident, right? Uh, or if you press quit, it'll close the app entirely. But this button does something else that you may not be aware of, right? If you look straight ahead, and this you can do now, if you look straight ahead and you hold your arm at your side like this, it kind of like, you know, like just bend it, like maybe a 90 degree bend right there. And you look straight ahead like that, and you press and hold that bottom button and don't let go for about three seconds, you're going to see a white circle spin in the air in front of you, right? And then your hand is going to snap right into place, right? And when it does, right, take a good look at your hand and ask yourself, is this where my hand is in the real world? If it is, you're good to go. If it's not, do this process again until it feels comfortable. Only you can determine what feels comfortable for you. But when you get it, just the right, you're going to find that your body language is a lot more convincing. And that's actually going to affect your relationships in all space. Because when your body language is more convincing, you can kind of connect with people, even without saying a word. You know, you can say a lot just by the way you move your head and just by the way you move that one arm that, you know, that uh, all space and Oculus give us just to keep it fair, right? All right, now, uh, let's see. Now, another thing you can do, you're going to notice occasionally in all space that your main menu button, those collection of circles on your lower left there, you're going to notice that that moves around sometimes. That won't be so easy to reach sometimes. Sometimes it'll go behind you, you know. And, uh, or sometimes it'll go directly in front of you. And when this happens, it can make you feel a little off balance, right? It's a really great and easy solution, all right? Uh, what you do is if you look straight ahead, there's a button right below your trackpad, right? That's your main menu button. And when you press it, it's going to open your main menu in front of you, all right? And that's pretty useful to know because if you can't reach your main menu button for whatever reason, your main menu is always right there, right in your hand, all right? So you just press that button one time and your main menu will open up in front of you. And if you press it again, that main menu will close. But when you do, if you're looking straight ahead, when you open and close it like that with that button, right, what that's going to do is your space buttons on your right with the world editor and host tools, sometimes you see raise hand, and then on your left, you've got your main menu wheel. That's going to be centered with your, your avatar is going to be right in the center of that. So if your menu drips around at all, just try opening and closing your menu with that button, and then that should clear that right up. All right, now, um, let's see here. Now, occasionally, when I, when I was having that power issue, right, the best piece of advice I got was I was told to turn down my brightness. But the thing is, I wanted to have the best graphic experience I possibly could have in all space. And to me, that meant having my brightness turned way up, like right into burning levels where it was almost painful, right? But, you know, after a while of my battery constantly running out, I figured I'd give it a try, right? And what I did was, if you go into the Oculus main menu, not the all space menu, but the Oculus main menu, and you press on settings on the right-hand side of that strip on the bottom, Right, about uh, halfway over, you're gonna see something that says brightness. When you press on it, you're gonna see the blue bar, right? This blue bar is gonna appear in the air in front of you, right? And what I did is every time I came into all space, I turned that bar down a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until there was no more blue left at all, right? And I came into all space with my brightness completely off and I couldn't believe what I saw, right? I walked in a space where, you know, and there was a tree in the corner where I learned how to moderate. And I went over that tree and I looked up at it and it was, it was the most realistic I've ever seen it. It looked real. You know, it was really great. 
you know, so I promise you, if you turn down your brightness, you won't regret it. You know, don't put it on the set to auto, like turn it completely down. So once that brightness is completely off, you're going to, you know, uh, notice that your device is going to perform better, your graphics are going to be better, and most importantly, your battery is going to last longer. And when I did this, I started making it through entire events. And I found out, you know, people hang out after events. They actually spend time with their friends after events are over. I didn't know that, right? So I started to experience that. What I did start to experience was a new problem. I started to overheat all the time. And I'm going to teach you how to address that, too, if you're overheating a lot. All right. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, one of the things that the Go users are, are, you know, known for, and it's kind of where we get a bad reputation, is because our microphones are very powerful. They're very sensitive. And in all space, we don't know the sounds that are coming out of our avatar. Like when I'm speaking to you now, I don't know what I sound like in all space, right? I recently did because now we have a YouTube channel and I can hear myself. And, uh, you know, we, we try recording these events. So if you want, you can turn around, look at the camera, you can wave, and you can feel all space famous if you want, right? It feels good. You watch these videos and you actually see yourself standing in the crowd. It's actually pretty cool. And if you want to uh, check that out, you can find this by searching for uh, it's Raven Hole Labs on YouTube and you'll be able to, or Raven Hole Events, so you'll be able to find us there and uh hey you can hit subscribe too it helps us out a lot all right uh so yeah so that's a cool thing to do um but so now uh with the sounds coming out of your avatar right now what happens is uh like you know let's say you you know you're new to all space and you're walking around the campfire and you're looking to see what it's all about you know and you see a group of people talking and you go over to investigate right and you know they're talking and all of a sudden they turn, they're talking to you, hey, how you been? What you been up to? Did you hear the thing about the other thing and all that kind of thing, right? And they, and then all of a sudden they turn and they face you, right? And you haven't said a word and they, then they start moving at you and they go, are you on a go? Are you on a go? Right? That, that can be kind of off-putting, all right? And it doesn't feel good. But what, you know, they're experiencing doesn't feel good either. What they're doing is they're sitting there, they're talking to their friends, they're carrying on, you know, they're talking about their day and whatever. And all of a sudden they hear a voice, right? A very familiar voice. And they turn and they look. And it turns out it's their voice coming out of your avatar. And that can be kind of unsettling, especially with the sound delay that's in all space. It's a couple of seconds behind what you, they actually said, and it can make it hard to talk to. Fortunately, it's really easy to manage this, all right? You'll notice on the top of your headset, on the left-hand side, you've got these two buttons, right? you got the leftmost button is the power, the, the volume down button, and just next to that is the volume up button. And when you press either of these, you're going to see these vertical bars appear in the air. Some will be solid, some will be clear. Uh, and what you're going for here is you want four clear bars on the right side, all right? This means, means that your volume will be four ticks away from the maximum. And when it's like this, the sounds coming out of your ear straps, right, they're, uh, they won't be as easily picked up by the microphone. But this comes as a trade-off. You may occasionally have to struggle to hear people. But it turns out you still like, got that one good hand in the real world, right? What you can do, and try this now, is you can hold your left hand up to your ear like this and make it like a like, kind of a cup. Do this now as I'm talking, look, like put cup your ear with your left hand. You're going to notice that my volume increases. So if you can't hear somebody good, you know, you ask them to repeat themselves, you cup your ear and it'll raise the sound up. But one thing that can't be beat is if you attach headphones to your headset, right? That will show the only sound coming out of your avatar is your own. You can even use a pair of inexpensive earbuds. In my case, my wife went to the library. She got these free earbuds and she brought them home. You know, she showed me, look, they gave me these for free, right? And they suddenly they disappear. Very sad. But good news, they reappeared a short time later, attached to my headset, and they remain there to this day. All right. And after that, the only sound coming out of my avatar people heard after that was my own. Occasionally, you'd still hear my wife saying, "Are you still on that thing?" But you know what? We fixed that too. We got her a headset, and now she's in all space with us. She's a very gifted world builder, very talented moderator, and we're very lucky to have her. Right. All right. So now uh, this got me thinking. You know, what else could I add to this device that would make it perform better? Like, maybe we can solve some of these problems, right? So what I did is I came up with something I call a Go Plus experience. And I call it this because I no longer felt like a regular Go user anymore, right? Because I go into, like, a heavy performance world, right? And, yeah, it would get a little choppy and we flickery, but I would see other Go users fall into the floor, right, or disappear entirely as they crashed. And when they did, I was like, you know, I would still be standing there, right? So the things I'm going to talk about, the way I accomplish this, I'm going to share this with you. And uh, but I'm going to do that by discussing these products. Before I do, I want you to understand that they're not the only products that work. It's the ideas behind these products that actually matter, right? If you want to try something different or you do try something different, come back and tell us about it. I love hearing about, like, somebody went another way and they tried a different kind of, a, you know, a fan or they tried a different accessory to improve their experience. I love hearing stuff like that. Or if you actually try some of this stuff, I love hearing how it worked out. So come back and let us know if you do. Uh, and the temptation is going to be to write this stuff down, but look, it's, let's be honest, it's very hard to write stuff down in VR, right? So what we did was we made it really super easy for you guys to get the links to these. 
What you do is if you go to altvr.com, you'll notice at the very top of the page, once you log in, you're going to notice on the left, top left it says events. So right next to that, there's this word channels. If you press on that, it's going to show all the event channels that they have in Altspace. We're at the very end of page two, toward the bottom, right, where it's very embarrassing to be. And you'll see, uh, you'll see Raven Hall events, like it says up in the booth up there, right? And if you press on that, it opens up our event page. And you're going to see all these products on the left-hand side of that page. And if you want to try any one of them, there's links to that stuff. You can try it out there. Or just take down a name and Google it or whatever, you know, and, uh, you know, shop around a little bit. Uh, you'll also notice a Join Discord button. You can help us put on events like this if you're interested in that. Uh, you'll also see the most important button ever on that page, the Subscribe button. When you press the Subscribe button, right, I hear music and I start to feel good and I get the strength to keep on going. It also lets Allspace know that you enjoy our content. Uh, and, you know, you know, and we don't get paid to do this, so it kind of, it's really great feedback. We see that number go up, it makes it feel great. So if you press that subscribe button, we'd be most grateful. All right, so now uh, let's talk about these products here. First thing we got is the Anchor Power Core Battery Pack. And I got this thinking it was going to solve my power issue. Because Oculus says not to use their devices while they're plugged in, right? But they say it's okay to use an external battery pack. And this one's supposed to last 16 hours. I didn't think I'd ever need to spend 16 hours in VR because I like food, sleep. I've heard good things about water. You know, thinking about checking that out when the show's over. And, uh, you know, yeah, so uh, I figured that would solve my power problem. But as I said, when I started last in all space, I started to develop that overheating problem, right? Now, the Oculus faceplate on, on the go, it's installed by hand. So everybody experiences something differently with this. You're going to notice, like, for example, you know, some people overheat every half hour. You know, that was me. Uh, I knew one guy that he overheated every two minutes, unfortunately. Actually, the first go time we ever did, when we took the questions at the end, right, there was a guy who said that his, fa his headset right, became deformed on one side, like it actually melted from the heat, all right, it's got me really worried, right, and I figured, you know, it had to be addressed, right, um, so when I got this pa uh, power core battery pack, right, that solved the power issue, but I also got this MagSafe cable, and I got this because I've been hearing a lot of people saying that their devices weren't charging as, charging as effectively as they used to, right, and the reason for this is because, like, yeah, I don't know if you when you go to plug in your device, you feel how tight that is, that, how tight the port is, all that wear and tear plugging in every day, you think it's the connections over time, we're not going to make a good connection, it's not going to charge as effectively as it gets looser, right? This MagSafe cable, what it does is you put one tip in your device, right? The other side you put into the battery pack, the USB cable, and it's held in place by a magnet. And this is a great safety feature, actually, because if you turn your head, right, with that wire, you know, and instead of having your headset, like, shift to the side, all right, that never feels good, right? What will happen is it'll just pop off, right? And you don't even have to take your headset off to fix it. You can just pick it up, right, hold it aside and, like, thunk right into place. It'll even make that sound. If your microphone's open, people are going to hear it and they're going to say, what was that? You can go, that's power. That's what that is. You don't have to say that. I just enjoy doing that bit, you know, so you, but, you know, you don't actually have to do that. All right. So, uh, you know, so you got this cable here and this actually, it solved all my power issues, but I was getting that overheating thing. And I tell you, I heard that there are people who actually put ice packs on their go, right? Do not do this. The person I know that did this, they went through two devices. Yeah, the thing about the reason I say that is because, you know, when you're putting uh, something cold against something hot, you can have condensation formulate, right? Water, electricity on your face, not a good combination, right? I don't think that's safe to do. But what I did come up with was this AC Infinity USB mini fan. It's real small. It fits in the palm of your hand. Super cheap. It's like $10 US. Even this cable is cheap. It's like $7 US, something like that. Most expensive thing is the battery pack. I think that's like $50, $60 US. And it turns out that, you know, uh, you know, there's different sizes and capacities. So, you know, feel free to shop around and see what you can find. But um, when I got this fan, I had been moderating the meditation event. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, right? It's on top of a mountain. You got these cool, you know, you got these bowls with smoke coming out. There's like cool fog and sunlight coming down through fog. It's an awesome space. But for whatever reason, I would always overheat 20 minutes in. So when I'd go to help moderate, I'd only make it 20 minutes before I overheat it. And then I'd, you know, push it by coming back, and I felt like I was damaging my device. It made me worried. I knew how to do something about it. So I ordered this AC Infinity fan, and when it arrived, I was set to moder moderate for this event. First things first, I had to figure out how to attach it to my headset, right? What you do is you want to make sure that the silver part here is facing your faceplate, right? And you can put it in place with, like, string. In my case, uh, uh, I used, uh, my wife has these uh, hair bands, right? So, you know, I made sure that they found their way to my device, and she's probably still looking for them. And I attached them to the, to the uh, straps, and I crossed them over, and I wrapped them around the round rubber feet on the fan. And I plugged it all into the battery there, and I came in. If you ever watched Star Trek, you know those board with all those wires hanging out? It felt like that. You get used to it, though. And I went into the meditation event. I went up to the host, Jeremy, super nice guy. And I put it on the, the lowest setting. I said, can you hear my fan? And he says, no. He says, you don't, you don't hear it at all. 
It sounds great. So it's whisper quiet, this thing. So I turned up the medium. I said, how about now? He says, a little bit, but it's not so bad. And then I turned it up all the way to full blast. And he goes, I can, before I could even ask, he goes, oh, I definitely hear that. It's like you're in a wind tunnel, right? And what I did was, you know, well, I said, um, all right, turn it back down to the lowest setting. And spoiler alert, I never had a raising again. Let me tell you how it worked out. All right. Not only did I make it through 20 minutes of the event, I made it through the entire event without overheating once, right? And I wanted to see where the line was, so I kept on pushing. I went to another event right after that, and I made it all the way through that. Two events in a row, didn't overheat at all. So I went to another event. Three events in a row, didn't overheat once. And then afterwards, I went back to my home space, hanging out with my friends, and then it happened. I left all space for the very first time, not because I had to. I didn't leave because I was overheating. I didn't leave because my battery was out of power. I, I left by choice because I wanted to, right? And you can too, all right? It's super easy to do. It's not very expensive and it fixes most of the problems you're gonna have in all space, right? So feel free, you know, try this out and upgrade to a Gold Plus experience. It's, it's really awesome. I started moderating events after this, like all the time. I was all over all space. I started hosting constantly, right? And you know, and you can too. It's real, it's real simple to, uh, to get started doing that. Um, that being said, it didn't mean it solved all the problems, right? There were still some problems, and these are more like annoyances than they actually are problems. Uh, problems they are easy to manage. The first one I'm going to talk about is a movement issue, right? And what happens is, like, let's say I turn to the left to say something to the taco salad over here on the left, right? But instead of turning left, I go straight. And I think, oh, that was weird. And I go to I-123 ah, to you know, turn on my right to say something about it. And instead of doing that, right, I go straight again. And that was weird. So I go to back up. I press down on my controller, right? But I go straight again. So I start, I start bashing all the buttons on the trackpad. And no matter what I do, I keep going straight. And the next thing you know, I'm standing inside of an admin. There is nothing more frightening than standing inside of an admin. All right? I saw the past. I saw the future. I saw things I can't even talk about. What I can talk about is how to solve this if it happens to you. All right? What you can do, all right, is on, you got to remember your trackpad, it's like your microphone. It's sensitive. It's sensitive. You know, to heat, it's sensitive to moisture, and of course, touch because it's the touchpad. See so a hand going up there, guess we'll be taking questions at the end. Don't worry about it. Hang on to that. All right. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's sensitive to touch because it's a touchpad. It makes sense, right? What you want to do is if you take your thumb and without pressing down, very gently, all right, delicately swipe your thumb across that trackpad from right to left or left to right, doesn't matter. Give your preference. But swipe it across. And when you get to the other side, lift it up off the pad entirely, across over in the air. Come down on the other side and gently swipe across again, all right? Repeat this process two or three times. So, like, let's say I go to turn left, but instead I go straight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go swipe, 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 and then I'm going to come down in the direction that I want to go, and more often than not, it takes care of that. It's going to make moving around a lot easier in all space. All right, now, uh, what's going to happen occasionally in all space, and this is usually going to happen when you're in a rush. Say you're going to be hosting an event, monitoring an event. Maybe you've got a hot date. I hear that can happen in here, no judgments, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to, like, you're going to come in, you're going to put your headset on, and what you're going to notice is when you get in all space, or rather when you put your headset on, you first turn it on, you're going to notice you get an alert that says, can't find controller. Now, this can happen if you need to change your battery in your controller, but you know that you put a fresh battery in it last night, right? And, you know, so you know you got a fresh battery in there, but for some reason, your headset can't find your, your controller, all right? Now, maybe your, your controller found out about, you know, the secret life that your headset has, you know, that pen pal on the inside of the world and is not too happy about it and they're no longer speaking, right? But what you can do is you don't even have to take your headset off to fix this, right? All you have to do is remember two words, double down. And what I mean by this is you've got two buttons on the bottom of your controller, and if you press and hold them at the same time, after about four seconds, a little white light's going to appear on your trackpad. Now, if you're wearing your headset, you're not going to see this. But what you will see is when you lift your finger back up, after about the four seconds or so, you're going to notice, right, as soon as you lift your finger up, right, your thumb, you're going to notice that you have a hand again. And you're going to step into that load screen. And you're going to be like, man, I sure am glad I went to go time. Then Michael Farris, he knew what he was talking about. He told me to double down, and now I get to be on time for my event. So you're welcome if that should happen to you. All right. Now, uh, another thing that can happen in All Space On A Go is you're going to notice that very occasionally your screen is going to go dark. All right? And the reason this happens is because, listen, uh, let's say when this event is over, you go by the campfire and hang out. You're not thinking about go time anymore, but your headset is, right? Like, you know, for example, like, you know, these curtains, they're in your headset right now. All these avatars in the room, they're in your headset right now. All the stuff on the stage, like all the YouTube address and what's down here? Is it the YouTube one? Did I get that right? Yeah, I got it right. Cool. I'm getting used to the set. All right. That's in your headset right now. All right. And uh, let's see, this, uh, this, this column, this is in your headset right now. The missing poster for Shrub. That's in your headset right now, all right? And eventually, 
the memory in your headset is going to fill up. And when it does, your screen's going to go dark, all right? And if your microphone's open, people around you will still be able to hear you. So you could say, you know, I can't see, I'll be right back. And then you press that bottom button on your control. That's like your eject button. It ejects you out of all space. And once you press that eject button, you can see this choice between a quit or resume. You press quit, the app closes, you restart the app, and you can come in. The best way to deal with this is from an advanced position. Get to it before it happens, right? So at the end of this event, like, you know, you turn to your friend, hey, you know, what do you think? And your friend goes, it was amazing. Oh, the host was so dynamic. He was wonderful. He was so, so much energy. I felt, I felt inspired to go out and get a go of my own and, and make all those changes and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and then you go, all right, all right, calm down. What do you want to do now? And your friend goes, well, you want to go to the campfire? All you have to do is say, sure thing. I'll catch up in a minute. And then you press that bottom eject button. And once you press that, you're going to, you know, uh, be taken out, you know, see that you know, choice to quit. You press quit, right? The app closes. You restart the app. You come back into your home space. You open up your menu. You see where your friend is. You hit go to. The whole process takes less than a minute, right? But you will have the advantage of choosing when you clear out the memory in your headset, all right? This way, it doesn't take you by surprise. It doesn't interrupt your conversations. And you basically make it a habit of, like, when you, you know, you've, after you've been to a world or two, you know, just restart the app. And it's a great way to get ahead of it, right? See that fist going on there. I can't reach. I can't reach to do the fist bump. I can't touch it. All right. Oh, there we go. Almost, almost, almost. We got it. Just lean forward. We can make it. We can do this. All right. Boom. boom. All right. Cool. Well, do, maybe get me after. I'd probably be a lot better. All right. So now, uh, I see I've gone a little over on time. So uh, I have some world building tips on the Oculus Go if anybody wants to hear. Let me see some emojis if you want to hear that. Otherwise, we can skip over it. Let me see emojis if you want to go over the world building tips. All right, not gonna lie, I see one person, two. All right, Clara, let's do it. All right, uh, now I moderate for the world building event on Tuesdays. And when I'm there, I hear a lot of Go users very often saying they can't build worlds on a Go. They say it's too hard, right? And it's simply not true. These devices are capable of wonderful precision. When this event is over, I take everybody flying, right? And the event we're gonna go, the, the place we're gonna go is Raven Hall Flight Academy. And there you'll, you'll see a world that was built in less than two days on an Oculus Go. And while you're there, you'll see like all these drones there and there'll be a port all these portals coming out of the bottom. The one on the end, seeing some frowns. No, it's a good place. Raquel, we're going to take any questions in just a minute, right? When you're there, you can see a portal to Lake Ravenhall. It's a, it's a really great space, very detailed. It took a lot more than two days because it's huge. Uh, but it'll give you some idea of what you can actually accomplish on an Oculus Go, right? And when you're, when you're there and you're, you're doing that, why do people think you can't build on a Go? The reason for it is because when you go into the world editor and you're building worlds, if you've entered the, uh, the world building program, which you do by going into your settings, uh, cogwheel, the main menu, under general, you'll see enable worlds beta. And this will allow you to see worlds, you know, participate in world building, right? Well, you, you start building worlds. When you go to edit an object, you'll see the object going around crazy all wild like that. It takes a while to realize that it's your head that's actually controlling the movement, right? So what you do is if you go into, the, in, into your world editor, there you're going to see there's a checkbox on the bottom it says lock rotation and once you press that button once you check that checkbox it changes everything what happens is you're going to notice that if you squeeze and release your trigger on your controller while you're pointing at an object to edit right you just one time like that now you're going to be able to adjust the rotation with your hand just like that move it around the way you like it and then squeeze and release the trigger again and lock it into place now if you squeeze and hold the trigger what's going to happen is if you move your arm up left you do up down left and right it's going to move in those directions right without affecting the rotation it's not going to be going all over the place right and uh you know and also if you swipe your for your thumb forward or back on the trackpad and move the object further away it'll bring it closer to you you know if you move it left or right it'll change the scale or the size of the object you know and one thing you'll notice too is like if you can actually squeeze the trigger and actually carry the object where you want to place it right see we lost a lot of people maybe i should have skipped over that i saw some emojis want me to do it but you know what keep on going all right, okay. so let's say we got this laser pointer here, right? And we're going to, so where are we going to put this? Let's put this on the edge of the stage, right about right there. Okay. Now, that's not really a good spot, because if this is the real world, that would be on the floor right now, right? But it turns out, on the go, you just need to get it close enough, right? So you get it close enough to it. That's pretty good. That's kind of close. And now, at this point, what you want to do is you go into, the, into your world editor, and you look on the, on, the, on the list there. You'll see your laser pointer on the list, and you'll see a cogwheel next to that. When you press on the cogwheel, you're going to see a panel open up. It's going to have all these numbers on it. And there's going to be numbers for position. There's going to be numbers for rotation or the scale or the size. And what you want to do is you want to play with these numbers a little bit at a time just to see what they do, right? And so, like, let's say right now the, the X value is, uh, you know, at 20 right now, right? So I change it, you know, let's change that number to 19 and watch what happens. We change it to 19, and all of a sudden you see laser pointer jumps over, right? Lands about right there. Now we know, right, if we move it in that direction... That number, we move it like, I think we changed it to 19, I just said, right? It's going to move it that way, 
all right? But if we raise that number, like maybe make 22, it's gonna move in that direction, right? And this is how you do it. Now then when you place another object in the scene, right, you're gonna notice that, you know, it, it's uh, a lot easier to manipulate these things now. And I know that little keyboard they give us to type things in on, listen, I know it, it's, it's a little bit clunky, right? But it turns out, it's a lot like when you play a video game, right? When you start playing a video game, you're thinking about the controllers all the time, right? But after, like, you know, after a week of playing it, you're not thinking about the controls anymore. You're thinking about saving the world, right? You're thinking about destroying your enemies, crushing your enemies. That's a great way to spend the Wednesday, right? So, yeah, you know, it just gets easier and easier the more you do it. All right, now we will be taking your questions and your comments and all that kind of stuff. So we are gonna, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a button appear on your lower right, which is raise hand, as if by magic. Let's see. There we go. Should be seeing it about now. And what you're going to do is if you press that raise hand button, you're going to get on my list. I'm going to call on you. I'm going to get to feel like a radio show host. I'm calling your name. And let's see. We got some people filling up already. What do we got? We got uh, 605 Zach 45. You're on the air. Yeah, what do you got for us? You got a question, a comment, anything like that? Where are you? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there you are. Right there. What's up? Uh. Hi. How do, uh, how do, do you, can you, on, on Oculus Go, can you, like, bend, like, can you, like, go through, like, walls and stuff? Because, like, if you're, like, because, like, if you had two controllers, I've seen people, like, go through walls. Like, Let's you find just, out. like, walk through walls. Let's find out. I'm going to take the stage blocker off her, right? Come up on stage. Anybody else who wants on a go and wants to try this, come up on stage. Come up with me, right? Now you see you got this curtain here, right? Move up close to this curtain and try to stick, try to stick your hand through it, right? And try to teleport, right? You just teleport icon appear on the floor through the, through the curtain and boom, go right through it. Let's see if that works. Oh, somebody made it. Two people made it. So yes, yes, you can. Three people backstage. Awesome. All right, very oh, cool. cool. Yeah, you, can, you can totally do that. All right, let's see if we have any other questions. You can stay on stage if you want. Uh, moderators, don't, don't be kicking anybody. They were invited. All right, let's see. We've got, uh, oh, no more questions. All right, cool. I guess I was thorough. All right, uh, now if anybody wants to learn how to fly, what we're going to do, right, is we're going to walk out that back door where you see that blue circle. We're going to walk into that blue circle, into the load screen, and we're going to end up at the Ravenhall Flight Academy. So if you want to learn how to fly, if you want to see a world that was built by a go, just go in there. If you've learned anything here today, Please share it with everybody around the time we keep this all space thing going. You've been a great audience. Thank you so much. I enjoyed doing this, and I'll see you all next time.